let's thank those on the platform. Praise God. Well, everyone, no one knew it wasn't a real fire, and everyone remained very calm, so that was a great blessing. Probably the world's worst kept secret. <laughs> it, um, let's turn to the book of Romans tonight in chapter 4. I want to look at Abraham's faith. You know, it was the disciples who said to Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. Uh, it was the man who had the demon-possessed son who came and uh, saw, said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And this can be a common request when we are anxious and facing real issues. We really need God to do a miracle. And we know from Scripture, all we need is mustard seed faith. And when you hear about that, it seems so accessible. You only need a mustard seed side faith and you can move mountains. But yet it's possible to feel, I'm not sure that I've even got that much faith. When you're in the middle of it, something, there's things that... You know, and it's possible if I don't know if I've got enough faith to see this happen or to see this miracle or this change. And we can feel like that because sometimes we misunderstand biblical faith. So let's turn in our Bibles to the book of Romans in chapter 4. Romans chapter 4, and we want to read verse 19. It says there that, uh, and being not weak in faith, he did not, speaking of Abraham, consider his own body already dead, which just simply means he was old, uh, since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, uh, he was able to perform. Amen. Let's pray. Father, once again tonight... God, we ask, Lord, that you cause your word to minister, God, to the needs and the issues of our lives. God, we ask that you would cause it to heal and bring deliverance, Father, to us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, our text ought to encourage us as we see Abraham. Here he is, he's the father of our faith, yet he struggles with the promises of God at times. And uh, yet God's word says of him, his faith never wavered. And it's always kind of strange. How could he be the father of our faith? His faith never wavered. Yet you find him struggling over some of the things God promised. So let's look at beginning just as an example of Abraham's faith. The Bible's filled with very specific promises. We know that. We've mentioned it before. There's some 3,600 promises that God makes uh, for every area of our life. And the truth is God's commands are always, or rather never, usually accompanied by reason, but they're always accompanied with a promise. You don't usually get a, a reason why God wants you to do something. He just says, this is what I want you to do. But there comes at the end of it a promise. We know scriptures like Isaiah 119, we mentioned this morning, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Uh, Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God uh, and his righteousness. Uh, and if you do that, then all these other things will be added to your life. So God gives us great promises so that our hearts might be filled with hope and expectation uh, for the future, that we'd have a confidence in the present. And our confidence in any promise is always dependent on the trustworthiness of the one making the promise. How many have ever bought a used car? You always hear the, the man smiling and telling you, you know, how wonderful it is, uh, uh, but you don't trust him. And so there's a, because he, he, you don't trust him, you don't trust the promises that he makes. If you think of Abraham and how he viewed God, it says in verse 21, being fully convinced that what God had promised he was able to perform, and therefore he, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Fully, absolutely certain. If God promised it, well, then it's going to happen. Yet, in our text, Abraham was given a promise, a revelation that God had something for his family, for his future, physically and spiritual blessing. And God spoke to Abraham concerning his descendants, even though he had none. In Genesis 12, 7, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants, 
I will give this land. And he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. So he's giving Abraham a revelation that was triggering his faith. Abraham began to believe, you know what, God has a future for me. God has a purpose for my life. And Abraham's response is a great example to us all. It says in verse 20 and 21, he didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced. So God counted Abraham as righteous because of his faith and because of his trust in what he had promised. You know, faith and trust is the foundation of our relationship with God. Your relationship, the foundation is not how much you know about God, it's how much you trust what he says. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. You know, sometimes you see God blessing a scoundrel. How many have ever seen that? And you wonder, hey, what's all that about? Well, sometimes scoundrels believe God. And uh, the Bible says without faith, it doesn't matter, you know, how polished our lives get, without faith it's impossible to please him. One man wrote, circumstances oppose just about every promise that God has ever made. Every promise is therefore a test of our faith. Do we give greater weight to the circumstances or to the promises? Faith will vote in favor of the promises. Unbelief will vote in favor of the circumstances. So Abraham was a man of great faith, but great faith will always be tested. Remember the Bible said his faith didn't waver. He was fully convinced, but it will be tested. And so let's look secondly at the struggle of Abraham's faith. You know, a common error uh, when we think of strong faith, and you say, man, someone's, they, they're a real man of faith. Usually you think of someone with a, a Joel Osteen smile, and, uh, you know, he's always, everything's always positive, and everything's always, hey, praise the Lord. And, uh, you know, even you know, my leg's hanging off. It's like the old... Uh, uh, I can't even, I never went to the cinema. I think I've been once in my entire life. But there were, whoever got the leg chopped off and the other leg and the arm, and eventually, I guess I think it was Monty Python or something. But it, um, you know, it's, it's like, you know, that sort of thing where everything's terrible, but it's, oh, you know, God's good, praise the Lord. That there's no hesitation, there's no concern. You know, if you've got strong faith, everything's just powerful and going forward. You know, those who preach hyper-faith to ref refuse to accept the reality of what real faith is. And as a result, many people presume they mustn't have enough faith because they feel because I'm not, hey, praise the Lord, everything is wonderful all the time and glorious and there's never, you know, the sun's always shining in my world because I believe God. So people have the feeling, well, you know, I must have little faith because I'm not like that all the time. The record of Abraham's life is that despite his strong faith, everything was not always clear to Abraham. In spite of his strong faith, Abraham still had struggles. So it's possible for us to struggle in the same way because many times it's unclear how God will bring to pass what he's promised. You know, we, we trust God. We know what he said is true. But it's just when we look at our life, and we look at where we are, and we look at what God's promised. There's a feeling, how, how's this going to work? I know God's true. I know God's right. I've, I've surrendered my life to him. But I just can't see how this is going to be resolved. Let's consider Abraham's faith for a minute. He started fairly hesitantly. He receives the call to go to the promised land. But only goes as far as a place called Haran. And uh, he stays there until his father Terah dies. And we know from Scripture his father was an idol worshiper. And perhaps that's why the journey never made it to the promised land, why he stopped in Haran. H.F.B. Meyer makes the comment, we need to be very careful who we take with us in our pilgrimage of faith. He said, we may make a great start from Ur, but if we take Terah with us, we shall not go very far. We need to be careful who we allow to speak into our lives and who we listen to in the, in, the, in the journey of faith. It's possible for the words and the influence of others to keep us far from God's place of promise. 
I mean, people can say little things that the devil just magnifies in your head. I remember when I was going out to Pioneer and my father simply said, you know, I, you know my father's a, you know, he's a wise man, he's very successful in life, but, you know, he, he said, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I think it's a foolish decision. It's like it's, those words I remember kind of, you know, unsettling. Children, on the, children of Israel on the borders of the promised land. They're just hearing conversations. It wasn't like there was a, you know, grand announcement or anything. They're, they're talking and discussing in the possible. And just in the discussion, just in the words, they begin to say, you know what, we, this will never happen. If you remember Paul when he was witnessing to Sergio Paulus, and uh, Sergio wanted to hear what he had to say. He, he wanted to hear the word of God. In Acts 13, 8, it said, But Elimaeus, the sorcerer, urged the governor to pay no attention to what Barnabas and Saul were saying, for he was trying to keep the governor from believing. So words are very powerful. And all of this caused some delay in Abraham really setting out for the promised land. God said, I want you to go. He goes a little bit, then he stops, and time goes by. He's not really fulfilling it. Yet we read... In Hebrews 11, 8 and 9, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he would receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going. It's interesting, God views, you know, with his, with his kind, of, kind of goes and then stops, and kind of, but God's opinion of it is that he went. He obeyed God. You know, sometimes we hear, and it's true, you know, delayed gratification, delayed obedience isn't obedience at all. And you know, there's a truth in that, but there's also a truth when you're struggling and trying to deal with things and issues and maybe you don't respond quite as quickly as you should. God still says, hey, they obeyed God. Remember the parable of the, the two brothers, hey, I'm not going to go and work uh, in the vineyard or wherever it was. And the other one goes, yes, I will. And the one who said no eventually goes. And God said, which one obeyed God? Then sometime later, we find him struggling with how God would give him an heir because Abraham is childless. And he concludes it must be his servant. Genesis 15, 3, then Abraham said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house will be my heir. So he's, he knows what, he, he believes what God said is true. He's just trying to kind of work it all out. Then we find Abraham wondering about the, the promised land itself, Genesis 15, 7 and 8. Then God said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? God doesn't rebuke him. He doesn't go and find another father for our faith. Abraham's questions are not unbelief. Like us, he simply is trying to grasp how God's promise is going to happen. Simply trying to get his head around. God, how, how, how can I know? How is this going to work out? He wanted to know more about God's promise. He wanted to have his faith strengthened. And Abraham's not questioning the possibility of the promise, but the method by which he would inherit the land. Abraham's also struggling with how. How is all this going to happen? The point is you can have real faith but still stumble and struggle with the how. The Bible said his faith didn't waver. It's like, God, how's this going to happen? What about this? Maybe it's the air. He's trying to kind of, he's trying to help it along himself. But God said his faith didn't waver. Because you can have great faith, real faith. As I said, but struggle and stumble at how it could happen. Because we have faith doesn't mean we have complete clarity. You know, when someone's always just praise the Lord, it's always perfect. Everything's going to, you know, you, you know, maybe you're like that, praise the Lord. <laughs> but sometimes you think either the person's mad or they're not living in reality because when you look at people of faith all through the Bible, it was always kind of a wrestling and a struggling. And as I said, even the father of our faith. Abraham's struggling, as I said, with the how. If you note, God has revealed to Abraham that through his body will come the heir. Perhaps when he 
sleeps with Hagar, which was something that was culturally acceptable at that time. He's trying to work out the how. You think, okay, this is maybe how it's going to work. God then appears and says, you, uh, what you have done is of the flesh. My promise is to you and Sarah. So Abraham's not good at working out how. He's constantly trying to, well, what about this? How's that going to work? And he's not good at it. And the truth is, neither are we. When you face life's circumstance, we'll always struggle trying to work out how it's going to happen. We'll always be left thinking, well, maybe I should try and help God. Or maybe if I do this, it kind of, maybe that'll be the way God wants to do it. With God's promises, it's impossible to work out how because it's, in, it's impossible and foolish to even try. Romans 11.33 said, How great are God's riches in wisdom and knowledge. How impossible is it for us to understand his decisions and ways. So it's insane for us to try and, well, I can see how it's going to work. It says it's impossible. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 and 8. Uh, seven, it says if we, that we walk by faith and not by sight. So don't give up on your faith just because you can't see how it's going to work out. Just it may seem, I just, I, I've, I've looked at every possible, and it just doesn't, it's not, it can't, I can't see. I was thinking of Lance. Uh, I, you know, every time I'd see him for a while, he would, oh, Pastor, I've got a job application in. I think this is the one. And I'll see him a little while later, how's it going? I didn't get it. Next while, hey, how's the job application going? Oh, I've got, I've, I've got a new one in. And then, oh, I didn't get it. And, uh, but whenever I see him, he says, oh, I'm, I'm still believing God. But, um, you know, I'm thinking, you know, he's, he's, he's tried all these different ones and it's, it's, nothing's happening. And then, you, we, you, know, you know the story, he goes and find out that his old boss had moved in to manage the organization that he was applying for this job for. And, uh, but he had no idea how God was going to work it to get him his job. Because how many know when you've tried something lots of times, you presume after a while it's not going to happen? I want to look at Abraham's reward thirdly tonight. A common mistake is that because people can't work out how God's promise could be fulfilled, they conclude that they mustn't have enough faith. They look at the circuit and I I just can't see how this is going to work. I can't. uh, And so they just, they can become discouraged and think, you know, I just, I just, I don't have faith like other people. And as a result, they give up and cast away their confidence. Just like what happened to the man in the siege in Samaria. If you remember, we mentioned him recently that people are starving. 2 Kings 7, 18 and 19 says, The man of God had said to the king, By this time tomorrow in the markets of Samaria, six quarts of uh, choice flour will cost one piece of silver. Twelve quarts of barley grain will cost one piece of silver. The king's officer had replied, That couldn't happen if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. And the man of God said, "You You will see it happen with your own eyes, but you won't be able to eat of it. You know, we can... It's one thing to struggle, but when you begin to think, you know what, I don't have the faith, what happens is we give up our confidence. We think, what's the point? I don't have I don't have this, you know, faith like just well, hey, praise God, it's all gonna work out. I'm struggling, I'm battling, I I I can't work it out. I'm stressing. How's this gonna try this? And we thought that, and we we thought this was it, and then it didn't happen. it's very easy in that midst of all of that just to think, you know what? I just don't have the faith that's needed. Others, when they can't see how God can do it, freeze in indecision and do nothing with the result that they don't press in. They stop praying because they think, what's the point? I, don't, I, can't, I can't believe. The danger is we move so easily from I can't see how God could fulfill the promise to plain unbelief. It's very easy just to slip over that border when you're looking, I can't see how this is going to work. I've tried that. I've done this. And, you know, you're lying there at bed at night just wondering, how how on earth is this going to get sorted out? It's very easy to move from that where you're believing God, but it's all so difficult to understand. Very easy just to flip over into just thinking, hey, God's not doing anything. This isn't going to happen. 
Unbelief always ends the same way. Hebrews 3.19. We see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. They missed what God had for their lives. You know, in spite of the fact that Abraham struggled to work out how it would all happen, he still believed God, said amen to God's promises. He's got himself in all kinds of problems, trying to meddle, trying to do this, trying to do that, but God's looking at him, and he says, you know, in the middle of all of his struggles and his, his battles, he believes what I said. He based his life upon what God had promised. Hebrews 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. You know, faith is always the same. It's a journey. We looked last week at the journey of uh, Jarius. It's a, we, we walk by faith. And Abraham was going to walk step by step, day by day, trusting that God would in some way open the way for him so the promises could become a reality. God doesn't tell us everything at once. It's piece by piece. I remember when we were, one time in Belfast, we were looking to, to, to see if we could get a house. We were living in a flat, and my girls would always say, uh, you know, Dad, will we get a house one day? And I said, yeah, yeah, God will get it. And so, you know, I started, you know, try this, put in for a mortgage. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing the least work I can and uh, the church couldn't give us much money, so I, got a, I think they offered me like 40,000 pound mortgage. It's like, oh, that'll be great, I'll buy a caravan. It, uh, so, you know, I, and, and, you know, it's just, it, do, it just seemed, and I remember just, you know, trying to this, that, what about this, that, and then by an absolute miracle, absolute miracle, I won't go into all of it, but we got a house. Absolute miracle of God. A journey of trusting in God his unseen working, sometimes we can be absolutely perplexed about how God will do it. Verse 20 and 22 says, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. All of us can have faith and be confident for the future that God has for us. Not because we're just, hey, praise the Lord, everything's going to happen, but because God is faithful. And you can look at some people and say, hey, they don't have much faith. But God says, hey, their faith isn't wavering. They're in church. They're worshiping God. They're believing God. Yes, in their head, they're struggling. They're trying to work. How's this going to work? How's that? I can't see how this is going to work. Uh, they're discouraged. They're, but that's what real faith is like. You have more faith than you realize. Philippians 1, 6 and 7 says, Being confident of this very thing, he that has begun a good work in you will complete it under the day of Jesus Christ. We need to always remember, God's not finished yet. You know, we had a, a lady, I think she's coming to, to harvesters from Belfast, Lady Priscilla. And uh, I remember her coming to, this is years ago, coming to live with us. And uh, in our house, she had a little baby girl. And... Um, had all her stuff in her, like a plastic bag. And so I remember she lived downstairs. We had a, 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 like a, a pool room downstairs, so we pushed the pool table off to the side, and she kind of slept in there. And, um, you know, she's, things she'd always tell me, oh, Pastor, really, God's going to help me. God's going to, and, uh, you know, I'd, I'd say, yeah, praise God. And, but you know how it is. She's there. She has no legal right to remain in the UK. She's got hardly any money. And, uh, and I remember her journey of faith. She used to, you know, she'd, every time I'd see her, she'd say, man, I'm believing God. And then she'd be trying to sort something out. Some, some would say, oh, if you do this and do that. And she's trying all these different things to get her status. And it's, uh, I remember one time her coming to me, she had tried to do something uh, uh, insane. And she came to me, some paper thing that she'd done. And I remember just she's weeping. She said, Pastor, I never thought I'd do that. And just she was so discouraged and and, uh, you know, we pray a prayer of repentance, and on she goes. And, but you could see, sometimes in church, you'd see her just struggling, but she'd always tell me, man, I'm believing God. And the amazing thing, from being in the sitting room with a little baby and nothing, uh, today she's one of the most well-known uh, immigration lawyers in Belfast. She wasn't a lawyer when she was living in the other room. But she just believed God constantly. 
she would, she would, and like I said, but it wasn't, if you'd met her some days, you'd think, gee, what's wrong with her? She'd be in church, you'd see her come in, she's just, you could see the weight of the world on it. But she would lift her hands, begin to worship God, and uh, just miracles. Because faith isn't just, well, hey, it's all good, praise God. Just, just blessing of God. Sometimes it's an incredible struggle. But at the end, the promise of God. Let's bow our heads. Close our eyes. Mustard seed faith can move mountains.